Hello and welcome to StartupChampions2.0, the show where you meet and learn from National Startup Award winning founders. In the episode today, you will meet our startup champion from the travel industry. They are Frontier Markets and a special mentor and a guest that's Padmaja Ruparel. So when you hear the word rural India, what do you imagine? Villages? Mud houses? Not enough electricity? People sitting at Chopals having chai? Our startup champions see something very different. They see rural India as a land of opportunity and ambition. This is why they created a digital infrastructure to enable people in rural India and fulfill their growth ambitions. They claim that the rural women entrepreneurs that work with them have earned over 200 crores in income and impacted over three and a half million lives. Let's see the frontier market story now. It's a, it's a 17 year story. Um, I basically had moved to India in 2005 where I started my career in microfinance. Uh, and at that time in the microfinance sector, the idea of providing loans to women in deep rural villages was something that was very difficult to do. So in those seven years, I got a chance to understand how to crack that model. How can you actually start reaching um, rural families where they live and start providing an opportunity to give them financial services that would be relatively cheaper than what was available to them otherwise. I launched India's first micro health insurance product, um, partnership with LIC to bring in life insurance into rural India. I launched the Nokia Airtel partnership that really brought in cell phones into rural India. So our mission is to provide solutions that cater to the challenges that rural families face so that their life could become easier. So easy life has become our motto. We started building a model where we've created a women's sales force right, uh, who are getting trained by us in marketing, sales, after sales service, data collection, really communication, and she's become the service provider, facilitating all these solutions to these rural customers, and we support her through a supply chain, and we support her through technology. Ajayita, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. My first question to you is, look, uh, your operation is digital. You know, when I read about it, it's, it's phenomenal. It's actually commendable. Uh, what is this digital operation and how does it work? Just explain it to our uh, viewers. So the context here is that rural India, while there is an incredible cell phone penetration that we've seen, smartphones, internet connectivity has increased exponentially. The typical rural Indian customer, though, is not a digital customer. Mm -hmm. They're not comfortable using smartphones on their own and buying things online. They're not a marketplace customer. They're what you call a bazaar customer. Sure. So to address their needs to access services, you needed a combination of technology, digital, plus women entrepreneurs, digital. So we have these women sales force um, that actually are working with technology to help assist rural customers to buy things online and actually have services at scale. Very interesting. And, and just building upon this, so how big is this workforce on the field? So today we actually, the latest numbers, uh, we have now 30,000 women entrepreneurs uh, on our platform who have helped over a million customers uh, buy solutions. Um, and they've sold, we sold over about 25 million solutions on the platform uh, through these women who earn now over 5,000 rupees a month every month to be able to have that service at scale. Phenomenal. Uh, so what's the role of the Saral Jeevan Saheli, right? That's what you call them. Uh, what's their real role? So, and are there any KPIs? Uh, you know, do they have any targets every month to deliver to? Or how, do, how does this uh, exactly work? So one thing that's really important to know is that the kind of women we choose are women that are part of the self-help group uh, network in India, which has been an, an, a mission that the government had created almost 70 plus years ago, uh, which was an intent to actually help rural women that are in the deepest local villages get access to income generating opportunities. Okay. These are women that are frankly, you know, could have been married at the age of 14 or around the age of 18 to maybe 55 years old. Their uh, education is not even fifth standard. Um, and they're someone who ultimately, while connected to community, has been eager to earn income to change her life. She's someone who is a mother, she's a farmer, she's a community worker. She really doesn't have that many hours in the day mm -hmm. to do work, but she's hungry to change her life. So that's the woman that we actually work with and we train her and recruit her to become our Saral Jeevan Saheli, our easy life 
service provider. Sure. Her job ultimately is to do what she's the best at, which is leverage her social capital or her network of people that she knows forever. Mm -hmm. And she asks them questions, she communicates with them, she collects data, she does customer service and insights, she does marketing, she does lead generation, and she does sales. Today, she's able to earn income through the sales that she makes on her platform to her rural customers, but then also through the data that she collects. So every month our women is catering to at least 50 to 100 households or close to about 300 customers and ends up on average selling anywhere between 5 lakhs to 10 lakh rupees worth of goods, but also earns income because she collects data and insights to help brands like Unilever, Philips or Samsung understand who this rural customer actually is and what the opportunity is to actually enter into the market. Very interesting. Uh, you know, let's just sort of step back a little. How do you fundamentally, on day one, how did you reach out to these, these women entrepreneurs? So the background, of course, is that um, because I worked in microfinance uh, uh, almost 17 years ago, um, I've, I've learned that there are incredible organizations and infrastructure that have been building these networks of women. So whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's the government SAG group, whether it's a microfinance institution, we've instrumentally as a country really invested in building networks of women. And so what we do as Frontier Markets is we understand the pain point mm -hmm. that these organizations have, which is that they've built these amazing networks of women, but these women aren't necessarily earning income. And they're not necessarily being able to get long-term sustainable opportunities. So we come in, partner with them, who have built these community um, um, you know, relationships, and through them, we're able to recruit these women. Now, what's my favorite story, though, is that when you meet a woman and you say, here's an opportunity for you to be able to work where you live. Sure. You do not have to travel. You can work whatever time you want. Mm -hmm. You don't have to work eight to 10 hours a day. You just have to use your relationships and ask for information and tell people things okay. and make money. So she looks at us and she goes, is this a joke? This must oh. be a dream job. She says, she calls it Aram Ki Zindagi okay. or like the easy life sure. job that she has. And so today, when we have these women entrepreneurs that come on board, we actually now have the opposite challenge where we have people from all over the country calling in, texting us, asking us, when can I be your Saheli? I want this opportunity as well. So it's an incredible opportunity when you design a solution meant for women and let them do what they do best, which is actually build relationships with the people they know the best. Fantastic. Let's talk impact numbers. Look, you've, uh, you've actually gone way deeper into the country, right? What has really been the impact um, in the lives of not just these Sahelis, but also your end consumers um, you know, across the board? So one of the things that motivated us to set up this company in the first place was that we realized that agri-families in India, over 800 million people, mm -hmm. um, are dignified customers who have aspirations and want access to solutions that can cater to the challenges that they deal with on a daily basis. Sure. It could be around uh, getting better agri-inputs, it could be financial services, it could be digital payments. It could be getting a TV, refrigerator, or washing machine, right? It could be a clean energy product. The challenge that these households have faced is that where they live and where the supply chain exists and where e-commerce exists and where the markets exist, nobody is catering to them. So they're left behind. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate because sure. ultimately, they're the most powerful voice, I think, in the country, right? So when you deliver the right services to them, our impact is exponential because we're actually helping over a million families or seven million people access services for climate related needs, agri inputs, digital services, and they're saving money, they're making money, they're able to actually see a very different growth. So when we look at our impact metrics, we say, how can we deliver services that will always create easy life for this rural household? Um, and my favorite story recently has been, even with COVID, because we have this platform, sure. because we have these network of women, we're able to deliver services even in healthcare. We're able to deliver services for vaccine coordination. Sure. Um, so I think, you know, when, I, when people ask me what impact have we created, I think we, the simple answer is that we've just created a better life for many people sure. uh, in the country where people don't know how to reach them. Mm -hmm. So what's your business model? How do you make money? So we make money um, uh, in, in three ways. So one, of course, is that we have a technology platform 
that is an e-commerce solution sure. that uh, essentially helps a lot of brands and product companies access new markets, get new revenue, get new customers. A lot of these companies just don't have their own distribution or their ability to understand how to reach this customer. So we become the pipe. And because we're the pipe, so whatever we sell on the platform, we then earn a commission sure. against that. But what's also been interesting is that because we are a data platform, um, we are able to get unique contextual localized data on individual rural households in a way that even a AC Nielsen doesn't understand how to collect, right? Because the one input that I've learned is that the hardest question you can get actually answered, do you know what it is? How much money do you make? Sure. But when rural women have a technology and they're able to ask that question, it's always accurate. This gives us the ability to drive very critical insights to help brands understand how to get new products and innovation into market. So that's become our marketing and service fee. And then lastly, because we deliver services and digital payments and, and marketing, et cetera, we earn revenue there as well. So what we're really excited about is the fact that we're not just earning money off the backs of our rural customers. We're actually being able to diversify our income opportunity by working with partners to understand the value of being able to reach this market. Got it. My last question to you, Ajayta, is millions of uh, Indians right now are actually watching you on Startup Champions Radio. Uh, they want to be successful like you. They want to probably go beyond that as well, right? Uh, what's your message to all of them? Dream big, but also be patient um, and be um, confident enough to understand that when you struggle and you fail, that you'll find a way out. You need to be a solutions finder. You need to be very resilient uh, to be able to last as long as possible. And please understand, nothing is a one night unicorn story. Sure. Everything takes time. And most importantly, whatever business it is that you want to do, please, please, please pay attention to your market and know your customer. Know your customer, that's the most important thing. The top two lessons of this session are number one, tier two, three, four, five, and six, Bharat is not just ready, it's ready to roar big time and unlock its ambitions. Number two, when you enable and empower women in Bharat, you enable and empower an entire generation and a lot more beyond that. It's now time to take the audience question. Please come on screen and ask your question. I'm Haya from Delhi. My question is that uh, do you own the warehouses and the last mile distribution with full-time employees? We don't own the warehouse. Uh, we rent it because we don't necessarily see a need because we're not actually stocking inventory. We're a dispatch zone. Um, but on the last mile delivery, absolutely, it is our field staff. Um, we have tried to partner with other companies, but we believe that the critical element of service is when a rural customer can place an order for a product and get it within less than two days into their doorstep where they live and we can help them with the installation and the after sale service. So we employ up to now 300 of our own delivery boys who are also using our technology to track everything in terms of ensuring that the fulfillment happens end to end. Because again, it's also the reputation of that Saheli if that customer sure. doesn't get that product. All right, so it's now time for a break, but don't you go anywhere. Next, you will meet a special guest. She is a mentor to hundreds of startups and a well-known Indian investor. I'll see you on the other side. Your window to rising India. India's voice on global platforms. Latest news from India and around the world. In-depth analysis of global headlines. Watch DD India in your country. Available for downlink in Central Asian countries. STTV broadcast is available through the satellite GSAT-17 at 93.5 degrees east. HDTV broadcast is available through the satellite GSAT-10 at 83 degrees east. For technical details, scan here. Switch to DD India now. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. It's now time to meet our guest and mentor, Padmaja Ruparel. Padmaja is the co-founder of Indian Angel Network and the founding partner of the IAN Fund. Her operating experience spans large corporates, M&A and startups, also early stage companies, by the way. A lot of profit for you. She has been awarded as one of the top 50 most powerful women in business by a leading business magazine as well. Padmaja is also the co-chair of Global Business Angel Network. She also operationalized Thai Delhi. Padmaja, welcome to Startup Champions 2.0. 
thank you for having me here fantastic let's start with the first question look up uh, from your life um, what are the key and the most important lessons that you could give as a woman that has actually created several breakthroughs number 1 do what you really want to do and what you really enjoy doing and the second that the only competition i had was myself so if you have those two i think there is nothing that can stop you and that also helps you to break new grounds all the time because you are only thinking about doing something which is going to be better than yesterday sure so that's the only way to break ground sure and i, and I totally believe that you come from a fairly humble background and of course what you've achieved is you. um, is an example for so many more people out there uh you know now let's come to angel investment okay uh, there are several angel networks today in india um it's just my assessment and a lot of other entrepreneurs as well that uh, they feel that patient's capital is still not available in india right by patient's capital i mean capital you know for companies to be beyond 7 years 8 years and and going up till 10 years right um do you really think this is the case or do you think it's just the fact that entrepreneurs are not building great solutions um, you know that can or that might deserve patient's capital i think it's extremely important to understand what is patient therefore hmm. is patience for 3 years 5 years 7 years 10 years 12 years it depends it sure. depends on which sector it depends on the business model it depends on investor appetite and it also depends most importantly on next round funding absolutely if the next round funding doesn't come then you are expecting a very different level of, of patience course. of course absolutely so uh, you know you you did touch upon certain sectors especially around healthcare right now and that was actually going to be my next question uh, let's now open up the secrets where is padmaja investing <laughs> so i invest across different sectors sure. i i play my risks i uh, bet my uh, uh, dollars but for me the biggest bet right. is the entrepreneur. 70% weightage wow. is on the entrepreneur for me because i do believe that a class a entrepreneur with a class b idea is far better than a class b idea class a idea and a class b entrepreneur mm. because there are only two things required to build a startup or okay. a company number one is funding which hopefully i think we can bring, i can sure. bring sure number two is talent which the founders need to bring. and if one of them is weak the other is not going to make it happen sure so i think we invest in companies where the founders are extremely good they are ext- they they are they are people who focused on execution understand how to sell understand how to lead and build teams mm. understand and engage with all stakeholders and they don't that doesn't mean that they need to know every single function of the company but just that they can lead and i think investors similarly have to bring in soft attributes other than just a check i think high quality investors will bring in mentoring they'll bring in uh, ha- operating uh, hand holding on operations as well as leverage their networks so i think it's a combination of good entrepreneurs and good investors to br- build excellent companies we are possibly the best um, you know country out there at least positioned at the right place at the right time in terms of our demography right we have the largest number of youth um, in india but not necessarily youth that are going in the right direction uh, what's your thought process on uh, you know what are the careers that we should look at what is it that we should skill ourselves up with to be relevant for the future if not be very ready for the future no so let me start with the negative sure So what I believe is unless and until we become a country with job creation as a focus we are going to create another industry called terrorism. Wow. So because it is only when you are economically weak mm-hmm. it is only when you have nothing to do it is only when you don't know where where I'm going to feed yeah. my family yeah. that leads you to do things by hook or by crook. Like crook. Yeah. Right? So I think as a country we have to focus on building jobs. Now, jobs are getting built by large companies also. And if you look at some of the some of the Kaufman studies of the US mm-hmm. from late 19th to 1900s to um late about a 50 year period, Kaufman Foundation 
actually threw up one statistic that apart from seven years within that 50 years, it was the small companies, they were not called startups at that time, Correct. it was the small companies that created a much higher number of new jobs. Okay. Okay. Versus large companies which were, crea which were really replenishing jobs. Interesting. Okay. So, see, it's logical. Sure. Paritosh, it's very logical. Two guys start a company. They get the first customer. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They go hire three more guys. Sure. They go get 10 customers. What do they do? They go hire 30, uh, 30 people, right? So, it's a continuously new job creation. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's number one career, according to me, that needs to be on people's charts. Sure. And fortunately, over the last few decades, when I was growing up and I wanted to be an entrepreneur, right. my parents actually told me that, okay, you can't be a doctor, you can't be an engineer, you can't, uh, you know, you're not getting a job, you politician not become a politician. So, okay, let you do what you want to do. Right. So, it was the last option. Mm. Today, not only is it the first option for people, but their parents are encouraging mm. them. Mm. Go ahead, do it. If you fail, we'll see. Right? So, I think that's the big change that has happened. Interesting. Uh, as an investor, does the pedigree and especially ped hatake, does the degree really matter to you before you, uh, you know, give your first take or, or when you invest? See, the way we look at it is when you're getting into something which is deep tech, biotech, if you're getting into some of these sure. sciences, then degrees matter. Sure. Right? Because unless you have that un academic knowledge, it's not going to work. But if you're going to get into something which is more execution play, you're getting into something which is uh, more D2C kind of thing, I think it's the person that matters, the weightage changes. But if you're going to say, you know, I am not educated, I'm not literate uh, and uh, in English, but I know vernacular, some vernacular language, that's fine. As long as your customer base is also in the same Correct. language space. Right, so if you you then can't be going and selling in an English-speaking country for that not. matter. Sure. So I think those are the different hues and uh, colors that you have to look for. So Got you it. still have to focus on the attributes and competencies of the entrepreneur to see whether he or she can really make it happen for whatever product or proposition they have. Got that. My last question to you, Padmaja, is: Look, lakhs of Indians are watching you right now in Startup Champions Two Dot What's your message to all of them? My message is very simple. Do what you want to do. Make it happen, but do it with your heart, soul, and mind. That's all. Then you'll succeed. There's no other way that you can succeed. Got it. It's time for a very short break. Up next will be step number 26 of how to start a startup. Meet me on the other side. Turning crisis into opportunity Transforming ideas into action. Stories of real change. Tales of sustainable solution. This series is going to tell stories of such change makers. Watch Change Makers on DD India. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. Learning leads to earning. You all know this by now, of course. Let's continue our journey of learning with step number 26 of how to start a startup. This step is called exit. No, no, I'm not wanting you to exit right now from the screen. I mean exit as to you would take an exit, hopefully, from your business. Remember two important things. Exit is not a strategy. And number two, choose your exit plan very wisely. I'm now going to list out a couple of options for you that you could actually choose from. And hopefully one of them actually fits in your business. Number one is an IPO, then an all cash or stock buyout, then a merger or a possible acquisition, and finally acqui hiring. Build a business not to exit, but to solve some of the greatest problems that the world has. Exit is only a liquidation event and treat it like that. It is doubtless a key milestone for all of you. It unlocks wealth for you and your stakeholders. All the four exit events that I've spoken about have different consequences and please be mindful of them. IPO puts you on with public responsibility and scrutiny as well. You're responsible for public money for your venture. People are investing in your growth, they're trusting on you. A buyout 
generally happens in case if you have an intellectual property or technology or network effect that is extremely valuable for you. This happens when what you have built can create exponential value for somebody else. An M&A, which is a merger or an acquisition, could be straight simple one or a forced one by the shareholders as well. Or it could be a strategic one too, where everyone makes money in the long term. Acqui hiring happens when you've been unable to unlock value and worth from your business and somebody else acqui hires you or your team for your skills and of course the network that you built. The masters of business they did not build for exit, they built to sustain and grow and create a phenomenal legacy. Remind yourself that a business is your legacy, it is your mark in the world. Don't just exit from it like that. Today is the last episode of Startup Champions 2.0. Bringing you this series was a startup in itself. We have put in sleepless nights and days to curate episodes, bring you the finest startup stories from across Bharat and India and learnings to grow your business. In this world of noise, we took a chance and created a program that inspires and guides millions of young Indians to start up. This is why we initiated this special segment on how to start a startup. We sincerely hope that you enjoyed learning from every episode as much as we enjoyed creating them for you. Share your feedback with us, make your videos and post them on social media with hashtag Startup Champions 2. Thank you for watching Startup Champions 2.0 the entire series. I wish you all the very best. Jai Hind.